holographic duplicates run amok, the return of a classic Voyager enemy, and a classic Star Trek villain trope. Hey everyone, I'm Nick and welcome back to Cyphernetics. Well today we're talking about Star Trek Prodigy Season 2 Episode 6 and 7, Imposter Syndrome and The Fast and the Curious. I love the first five episodes of this season. They have been fantastic, really engaging episodes um, that have really got me going on this season. Although I kind of feel like episodes six and seven maybe have been a little bit of a bump in the road. I, I, I think to me, they sort of feel a little bit like filler episodes where uh, we up to the end of last episode, we were on the journey. We're off to look and try to find Chakotay with the spiral nebula thing going on. But episode six kind of spent most of its time with the kids trying to program their duplicate holograms. And then episode seven, they got sidetracked in a Kazon run ship race <laughs> on some planet somewhere. I kind of feel like I was really eager to keep going on the journey that these guys were traveling on, but it sort of felt a little bit like in these couple of episodes that we've sort of put the brakes on their mission and, and they we have to go off and do these other things now which have no bearing on the entire story of, of the season as a whole. In episode 6 we get the kids obviously starting off much further into the episode and then we do the whole kind of 24 hours earlier routine to kind of hook us into the episode. And we work out that obviously the infinity is due to be uh, destroyed, its um, technology is a little bit um, forbidden in the Federation uh, and now that the mission to recover Chocote has been cancelled by Jellico that they have to destroy the Infinity. But the kids obviously have got other plans and they have to, you know, trying to steal the Infinity to go and rescue Chakotay. And obviously then subsequently save Gwyn. So I kind of feel like the, the plot of episode six could really kind of be distilled into maybe around 10 minutes of plot. We, we basically, the Infinity slated for destruction, the kids create holograms, so you can jump on board the ship and then cloak it right when it's about to go into the star and then obviously take it off elsewhere. But obviously we get a lot of stuff wrapped up in this episode where they're trying to program the holo duplicates getting them right, the hollow duplicates think they're the real ones, which was kind of interesting, I suppose, but I would have thought this concept of hollow duplicates running around the ship thinking they're the real ones could have been essentially solved the second they left the holodeck. Because obviously once they're in the, in the holodeck with the hollow emitters and everything, they were there. But I don't think every single corridor and, and space on board the starship has got a hollow emitter in every single hallway. I mean, the doctor's walking around with his mobile emitter, so he obviously wouldn't need that if there was hollow emitters on every single deck on every single place on the ship. But I kind of feel like they kind of ignored that little bit of plot and they kind of had the holograms running around the ship, thinking they were the real crew, which under normal circumstances would have been thwarted the second they st stepped outside of the holodeck space. So it seemed that aspect was maybe a little bit of a stretch. And it kind of felt a little bit like they took this, this plot of the creating the holo duplicates and kind of stretched it out over the whole episode. We seem to be getting a few more hints in this episode of the uh, ongoing potential relationship between Zero and Magel. There's a few little moments in the hallway there where Magel is sort of flirting with Zero somewhat, which kind of has been a, a common thread, I think, throughout this season so far, which obviously seems to be leading to something between these two. We get a bit of a repeat as well of the whole distract the doctor routine from one of the last episodes where last time they had to distract the doctor from from uh, nosing into their business by asking about his latest holo novel, whereas this one we had them asking about the Doctor's operatic uh, skills and singing opera and everything which uh, which Magell uh, does to uh, buy the kids some time to achieve what they have to achieve. The main piece of plot in this episode is obviously the, the theft of the Infinity, which is obviously launched into the Blue Sun, and then the kids cloaking the ship and then flying it off to go and find this spiral nebula they need to find and, and, and activating the hollow duplicates of them on board the ship. Everything else apart from that I think is kind of just a bit of filler but it certainly was fascinating at the end of the episode where the hollow duplicates clearly when they have re been rebooted have been rebooted with the wrong personalities installed so all of the characters are, are switched up uh, into different bodies. Dull and Zero have swapped bodies so we've got the dull body with the Zero personality and 
the Zero body with the Dull personality. Rock and Jankum have switched bodies, so we've got Rock's body with Jankum's personality and Jankum's body with Rock's personality. Gwyn and Murph have swapped, so we've got Gwyn making squelchy, squirky Murph noises, and therefore it would also mean that we've got Murph's body with Gwyn's personality in it, which should make for some interesting characterization in forthcoming episodes. Episode 7, The Fast and the Curious, obviously starts with a captain's log by Dull, even though the kids are giving him a hard time about, hey, and what do you think you're doing? You're like, you're not proper captain, like, just do it as a personal log. And we have Jankum coming out of the Sonic toilet. Um, I'm not sure we've ever referred to uh, toilets in Star Trek as sonic toilets before. Sonic showers, yes. But not sure how a sonic toilet works. That's uh, a bit of a new one. And the kids are on their way to this spiral nebula to uh, find the next clue in the puzzle to find Chakotay. But the whole story kind of gets a bit hijacked. We end up taking a shortcut through a Borg transwarp conduit, but a Kazon device attaches to the hull and they find out that some Kazon Marge or whatever is using this Borg transwarp conduit to capture starships hit passing through and then putting them to some kind of a test in, in a race through subterranean tunnels on his planet, which turns out to be all run by a uh, Agamus or Landru-style evil kind of AI computer that's kind of taken over. I kind of did, did feel like this was a bit of a hijacked episode. I think it's sort of like, oh, I, I get that we can, we sort of may, maybe can't have every single episode advancing the plot to the overall storyline. And I get that we have to sort of pace it out a little bit to, in some instances. Because I suppose the first five episodes were, were so rapid fire in there, constantly advancing of the plot, it sort of feels like we've screeched the brakes on a little bit in this episode to have them do this whole race with the Kazon. And the Kazon is sort of under control by the evil AI computer, which is, you know, a concept that's sort of obviously been done a few times before and not really done in any radically different way this time around than it has been covered in past Star Trek. But it was also amusing back on Voyager to see the hologram replacements of the kids acting weirdly uh, in their incorrect bodies. So even though I guess the uh, the chase was vaguely exciting, I suppose, in this episode. I did kind of watch it, thinking, "All right, come on, let's 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 get back on track here. Let's get back to the the, the main story." I kind of feel like we didn't need to see this. You could remove episode seven entirely with their whole sidetrack mission to the Kazon with the AI computer, and the overall story wouldn't really suffer in any way. It kind of feels like a bit of an un unnecessary sidetrack. And I guess also because we've done episodes of Lower Decks before, which have featured Landru and other AI computers like Agamus and everything as well, that it sort of feels like the whole evil overlord AI computer concept has maybe been done a little bit to death recently. So I sort of felt like that wasn't something necessarily fresh and new we haven't seen for a while. But it did end in quite a surprising fashion with Zero sacrificing his uh, suit, I suppose, by uh, damaging himself by smashing into the uh, the evil AI, breaking his suit, getting his arms ripped off, and his containment suit thing is uh, significantly compromised. So that was a bit of a surprising turn of events, which I didn't anticipate happening, and I'm not sure how that's going to play into future episodes. Broken Zero and uh, fritzing out of uh, reality Gwyn. Everybody seems just a little bit not quite right. And this episode ends with... Um, back on Voyager with uh, time slowing down and uh, and freezing with these strange ghostly tentacles reaching out in through the hull of the ship, stealing Murph, who's inside Gwyn's body, and then time unfreezing and returning to normal again. So I'm guessing this is the setup for uh, episode eight. Overall, I didn't, I didn't hate these last couple of episodes. They, 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 were, they were okay after the rapid fire plot advancement that we've had in the last five episodes, it kind of felt like we, we um, you know, hit the brakes a bit in these last two episodes to kind of pause our main story uh, to, uh, to have these sort of uh, little filler episodes that just kind of delayed the overall story a bit. But let me know what you guys think. I'll leave a thought in the comment section and we'll get chatting about that. Guys, if you haven't subscribed to Siphon Ace yet, be sure to do so. Click on that big subscribe button to stay current and up to date with all the latest Star Trek news on YouTube. And be sure to check out my uh, cool t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, caps and stickers and everything in the merch store. Plenty of cool sci-fi and Star Trek themed designs in there. And always at pretty reasonable prices, which really help support the channel and pick yourself up a great bargain at the same time. Hope you guys are enjoying the show and I'll catch you next time.